Hello, this is Chuck Tomasi here to show you how to build complex queries very quickly using the list filter in ServiceNow. My use case for this is that I'm going to take my loaner request system and find out if an item is available based on the reservations from other requests to determine if there's a conflict or not. In this video, I'll be going through a visualization of the scenario, the use case that I just described, create English statements for that condition that we're going to use from the visualization, then build a list filter query from those English statements, and finally, turn it into real usable script by replacing the query that I copy with hard-coded values and turning them into variables. The benefits of doing this are, there's no complex SQL statements. I don't need to be a SQL master to build out very complex queries. I also don't need to get into the add or conditions and add queries of, of the glide record query that I consider myself a fairly proficient programmer, but after one or two conditions, these make my head hurt. You get to use easy to use scriptless tool to build this out quickly for very complex queries that I'll show you in just a minute. Visualizing this looks something like this. I have a whole bunch of requests and I have a new request coming in that has some parameters about a start and end time. And I want to find out which of these requests have CIs that are available and which conflict. Each of those requests has a corresponding start and end, which are denoted by capital S and capital E. This one is clearly available. It has no conflict, as does that green one on the right. However, this next one does have a conflict. And I can tell because it's got an overlap. We're going to make that formulaic in just a bit. This one clearly has a conflict also. As to this one, the one that's gray, we're not going to worry about because it's, it's returned and doesn't matter anyway. It's not checked out. This one, however, this bottom start and end date has a conflict because it's checked out and not returned. So even though the end date, it looks like it's outside of those brackets. If it's checked out, I want to capture that exception also. Say, is it, is, it, is it active and conflicts with my brackets? Or if it doesn't conflict, is it checked out and just overdue? Logically, what that looks like is those first three bars are going to fall into this case. It's active and true. The two green ones and a gray one are not active, so we don't need to worry about those. And do the start date and end date conflict with these? Uh, and then the exception is, is it active? Is the end less than now? which means it's overdue. If I write that in terms of English statements and conditions, is this a CI I want? Is the request active? Does the request start time, is it less than my new request end date? That's what I visually represented there and denoted in the box. I'm just spelling it out in bigger words here. And does it also have that possibility of overrunning in the other direction? Or is it overdue? Is it the CI I want? Is the request active? And is the ending time in the past. So my example is I want this particular asset, I'll just call it P640, so I don't have to say all the zeros, from Wednesday, the 21st of September, end of day, to Thursday, the 27th, beginning of the day. That's my range. If you think about those vertical bars on the previous slide, that's what I want and when I want it. So let me look at that in a live instance. Here is a list of active requests, and I have built out a filter, so you don't have to watch me type, called that. And this is the condition builder for those statements that I just wrote. I visualized them. I wrote down the rules as very terse rules. Then I made them English. Now I'm making them a condition. However, these are hard-coded values. I'm looking for a specific value. Uh, notice that the key to making all of this happen is the breadcrumbs up here. And if I right-click on the rightmost breadcrumb, I get a, an option that says copy query. When I click that, it says your query has been copied to the clipboard. And if I look at that, it looks like this big, ugly mess, which is all on one line, doesn't even fit on the screen. I go back to PowerPoint where I've pasted it in. And what I get is this. And you say, Chuck, this is simple. This is supposed to make life easier. This is just a big string with delimiters in it. It's called an encoded query. And we can take that apart and then turn it into parameters. So if I use the up caret as the delimiter, as the separator for each of these, I take the first part and say, look, this is what I want. Active is true. Here's the CI. This is the work start. And it uses this JavaScript colon notation to generate a date to compare with the field value that I'm getting from all the other records. That's all it's doing. Now it's starting to look a little more familiar. It looks like the filter. It's just got a lot of hard-coded values in it. 
The second part, again, very similar. I've got my CMDB, I've got my active equals true, and I've got my work is less than now. That's how you say now with the query builder. This was all generated for me. What good is that? Well, now I need to take those hard-coded values and turn them into some easy-to-use script. So I can take anything that's hard-coded, like active equals true, I'm just going to turn it into a little st literal string and concatenate the values onto that. So instead of a hard-coded sysid, I'm going to pass a parameter with a sysid in it. And then I'm going to pass the value of my request start and end instead of generating those dates. Because I'm writing JavaScript, I don't need the JavaScript colon part. I can just use my true variables that are dates and times and compare them with other dates and time fields. Very easy. Here comes the or condition, same kind of thing. Very easy to do. I'm just sort of stealing from what the query builder built me. When I turn that into a big, beautiful script, it looks like this in a method. Here is the part that I used for my encoded query. You saw me do that on the previous slide. It's just concatenating, building up this query. And instead of running it through a glide record query, I'm checking glide aggregate to put the power on the database. So if I've got 10,000 of these records to look through, I'm not going to have to count them all. The database will do that for me. So look up glide aggregate. It's very powerful. And I should note that the add or condition is not available in a glide aggregate. So by using the encoded query, I can also take advantage of this. So I'm getting the best of both worlds on this end. The key to making this happen is, of course, that copy query. In summary, use that list filter to build your complex query, copy it, and then just replace the hard-coded values with variables. It's so easy to build and maintain later. Thank you very much for watching this video.